Coach, let's start with you. Um, started out well, but uh, the second half didn't really go according to plan. Talk about the match against uh, number seven, Virginia Tech. Well, I told our guys coming in this that they're going to have to battle through each position and continue to wrestle. For the most part, most of the guys did it. They just didn't. They just can't smell the kill. Like the three guys up here, they could smell the kill today. They knew that they were going to win before they walked out there. There was no. I think some of these guys have doubts. Had some doubts going into that match, and you know. But uh, I knew when 25 stepped out, he's going to win the match. Just by how he competed. I know when he's getting ready, when he's going to win, and when he's going to lose. And you know, he he wrestled hard, and I think the other guy kind of backed away from him. Um, at 33, I thought we wrestled well for two periods and shut down, to be honest with you. Um, any way, shape, form you look at it, you can't let guys get in on your legs, you know, 15, 10, five to 10 times in a period. But you know, Hannah's got a lot of promise, he's just gotta correct his mistakes and listen and be coachable. Uh, 41, um, we definitely had a, um, were in position to win that match. I think he got uh, behind a little bit too early. And um, you know, basically that was one of the winnable matches I think we left out on the board. You know, I think 41 was definitely a winnable match. We should have won that match. There's no excuse why we shouldn't have. Um, 49, Keenan did a great job. He came from behind. You know, he got the guy tired. The guy had an early lead. He came back, broke him, rode him for, you know, a minute and a half. So good for him. Uh, same thing with Larry. Larry took his guy down. I don't know if he's in the regulation or OT. So I figured in order to win that match, we'd have to win four of the first five. And I had Perry Pence for that as one of those four. So that was not real good going into the second stanza because you know, this duel, they kind of hit our strength and we hit their strength. Um, 65, I thought Jones wrestled against, good against McFadden. You know, he's a three-time All-American, you know. Uh, the 74-pounder, I liked his second, third period wrestling. His first, his first period wrestling is just, he's got to get past that <coughs> where he gets behind two or three takedowns. But second, third period, he wins every match. You know, once he figures out how to get through the first period, he'll be pretty good. 84, I thought AG battled well, Bell, you know, he's ranked second in the country. And, um, you know, 97, um, a little disappointed in, in that match. I thought we could have won that match. I thought we were just as good as that kid, if not better. So we're gonna have to go back and look at that. Um, heavyweight, I thought that we could have competed better in that match too as well. But overall, you know, you got a hand at the tech. That's why they're a top 10 team. And I thought the crowd was great. I thought the recognition, you know, for Jamie Kelly's, um, Family was great, thought the alumni was great, we just didn't come away with a win. So um, we're back to it. Uh, we're here next Monday against Drexel, and then, you know, three weeks from the day, we close out our season against Bloomsburg. I mean, this is the end of the year. So um, we're very thankful that, you know, we had a lot of Tidewater fans show up. We had a really good crowd, and um, we were able to uh, wish we could have put on a little bit better show. But uh, it was a good match overall. You know? All right, thanks, Coach. Let's go right down the line. Larry, you're ranked 11th coming into uh, to this match in the country take it on the number 13 ranked kid. Obviously it's a very close match and take your uh, opponent down in the seventh victory. Talk about your match. Um, I was pumped for this match, not only because uh, I feel like I step up when I'm going against ranked kids compared to a non-ranked kid. Um, and also me and him have a little history um, from the past. You know, I've beaten him before and he's beaten me before. Uh, so I was in on top of that their tech. So um, I was pumped coming into this match. That type of stuff uh, pumps me up, doesn't make me nervous. Um, so um, I was just looking forward to getting to my attacks the entire match. Um, and I knew that if I was on my attacks that I was gonna win that match, no matter how long it took for me to win the match, I knew that I was gonna win it as long as I stayed on my offense. And that's basically what went to plan. Going into the overtime period, obviously you, you battled three periods, it's mm -hmm. tied 1-1. One, one. Are you feeling good? Are you feeling loose? Or you... I was feeling good. Um, my hands were still moving well. Uh, it wasn't just something where I think I was feeling good. I think everybody saw that I was feeling good because my hands were moving. Uh, Coach DT told me that he knew that I was going to win in overtime because of the way I was moving. Um, so I just, and mentally, I just felt good. I knew I was going to win that match. Um, so, Killian. Another great start to a ODU match. You take down number 13 kid in the country, and Joey Prada, coming off a, a great weekend last week. You were named the MAC rest of the week. Talk about the zone you're in currently. Um, I mean, I'm feeling good. My energy is good. You know, um, wanted to get a takedown in that match, but you know, you have to win on riding time sometimes, and it's the end of the year, so you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes to win. But other than that, feeling great. Yeah, I mean, it was a close 2-1 match. Uh, <coughs> want to go into a little more depth about it, uh, talk about the riding time. How important yeah, it was. Um, I was riding him hard, and when you ride someone like that, you take a lot out of them, you know, especially, you know, it's a pride thing. Hold someone down for a minute, they're 
you know, when, when he got up, I knew he didn't, he wasn't, he didn't have anything left. So. Gotcha. Excellent. Now, Keenan, you took down the 23rd ranked kid in Bryce Andonian. Obviously, you're not ranked. Going to that match, what's your mindset? I mean, I like to have the same mindset going into every match, you know, whether ranked or not, just kind of do me. I know I can get riding time on every kid in the country. I know I can uh, get away from every kid on the country. So for me, it's still, I just need to focus more on the first period. I gave up two takedowns. It's not really the way I want to start matches. I've been having a couple issues first period with a lot of the ranked guys I've wrestled this year. So I think that's something that I need to figure out. I think today I kind of started figuring out, but a little late, probably I shouldn't have given up two takedowns, but you know, it's the end of the year and got to start building now. got to start getting ready for the end of the year, whether that gets me ranked or not. It's all building for the conference tournament where that's where you get your shot. That's where you want to make it, make it count. So it's just building right now, trying to be as good as I can be. You mentioned it was a comeback. You ended up winning by a solid three points, nine six. When you're down that early, what's your what do you what is your goal for the next uh, two periods? Just get as uh, get as many takedowns, or, or what are you looking for? Score the next point and wrestle the way I wrestle. Um, not try to get away from any of my game plans. I knew um, we've talked about it. I like being on top in the second period because I know I can take a lot out of people. So that uh, he got away. Wasn't expecting that, but. Then it's just get to my offense, get to my ties, and wrestle the way I know I can wrestle. So that's all it was. It wasn't it wasn't going to freak out because I was down. It was just score the next point every time. All right. And, Coach, you mentioned it in your, in your opening statements. Uh, it was a great crowd with the alumni. Jamie Kelly's family was honored. His life was honored. Talk about what uh, Jamie Kelly meant to ODU and wrestling in this area. Jeff. Well, I think uh, in general, you know, uh, Jamie Kelly was instrumental and in, um, – you know, he's the first, when I first started coaching 30 years ago, 29 years ago, he was on my first team along with Mark Strickland. They're the two guys that kind of helped build the Great Bridge program up. And then from there, he went to ODU where he was, you know, was a national qualifier. But uh, I think one of the reasons why everybody, you know, liked him so much is that they, he just, he had to work for everything. He wasn't very talented, you know, really great athletically. He, it was all hard work. And anybody that works hard and wins, you got to have respect for him. And, you know, um, after his uh, college career, he went over to Cox High School and coached for multiple years. And then he even coached here at ODU. And then after he was done at ODU, um, you know, as an assistant, you know, he continued to do a comeback and support us alumni-wise. So, you know, Jamie Kelly is very important to our um, ODU wrestling family and the Cox and Great Bridge families, you know, wrestling in general. And I thought alumni support was great today. You know, we had 50, 60 people out there, which is, you know, great for alumni match. So we appreciate all their support. We encourage them to come to our last two duels. You know, we have Drexel in two weeks and um, Bloomsburg in three weeks. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for your time. Yep. Come on, Arch.